It's still recovering from shipping, but it has put out a few new pads and is doing well. And the, I also have a one visa sitting in here that I need to elevate a little bit just because that's a whole long story. Don't worry about it. The water in this is nice and still, so at nighttime there will be a good reflection from the fountain behind there onto everything out front. And yes, this is a fountain. I have the hyacinths the draping over here intentionally because hyacinths, I've seen them on fountains before, and if there's a little bit of water moving underneath them, but sometimes they'll come and trail down the side. So I went ahead and I used this uh, plastic, like a whiskey barrel liner on top of a couple bricks, chiseled a spot out to run a pump in there and got that set up just like It's a very subtle flow, but that's all I wanted. It needed to be subtle because it can't have much of a splash space. It can't be going all over the place. Then I have these Dracanias in the front, the Song of India, very pretty, nice variegation. They're not perfectly even, but it's hard to pull off symmetry with two separate plants and there's three different plants growing in them and that's the same thing with the palms you can see these palms one has a little bit more trunk on it than the other i'm okay with it it's a close enough match nothing wrong with it I have curcuma alismrofolia in the back that's the siam tulip ginger i like having little details worked behind everything this helps pull your eye through and keeps things more interesting Croton in the front and then a croton in the front i try to keep things symmetrical but not so symmetrical that it looks too planned out in stage. So that like, that's why there's a macho fern over here and a lady dye heliconia on each side. This in the front right here is an Exora. It's not in bloom yet. I, it's bloomed, it's like in a resting phase is what I should say. That'll put out some new blooms pretty soon. I did want to make sure to have the crotons in the front of each one of these because that way it ties in to the planters as they go further down where I have the crotons, the begonias, the cordolins, the alicot. I didn't want things to look too random when they're right next to each other, but I still want it to stand out and be somewhat tucked away, which I'd say it is. This little bamboo shelf that's over here, I had intended on putting a, um, a lantern on there. Put that tag down real quick. I had a little lantern I was going to put on that bench and uh, I can't find it, but I actually decided I'd rather do a small little planter to put on there. It can't be anything big because I actually use this tiny little stool for filming videos also, so I have to be able to plop it off there. For now, I just, I don't know why I just set a rock on there. It's fine, it'll do. And then I'm working on the electric. I have a helper coming over tomorrow night who's gonna help me run this behind everything and I have a special box I'm gonna put in to protect everything. But unfortunately, there's a wire in the way, so it doesn't look as perfect as I would like it to, but it's pretty close. Minus that ugly cord that's in there. This came out just how I wanted it to. A nice, tranquil, serene corner in the garden. My intent was for it to look planned, but not so much to the point that it was overly formal, and I want things to be somewhat naturalized so that it looks like, even though it's intentional, it's been around for a long time. And uh, a big part of how I was doing this was I wanted to make sure it looks really nice at nighttime. That's when I'm the most active outside. I like to be out here at nighttime. And I guess I'm the most active during the day when I'm gardening, but that's the relaxing time, the, m the most joyful time outside. So I did get a light to put in here off of Amazon. It changes colors way too quickly, so I'll probably pick a color to keep it on, just leave it there. But I really like how it bounces off the front of the pot. I can't back it up any further, so it doesn't light up the whole thing. But it still looks nice, and I like how it looks going through the Dracanias, the Song of India's in the front, and the ripple effect that it has on the foliage on everything around it. Very peaceful. Makes me very, very happy. And that's that. That's the start off to this new little area. I might move this plant stand that's in the background because it's sort of an eyesore and I don't really like it there, but yeah, for now, it's good. I'm sure I'll be adding to it because this is what I do. I'll find other things want to be a little bit more detailed, though it is already fairly detailed. Like there's enough that I already forgot to mention some things like I have some bromeliads tucked back here and whatnot. I do wish the lotus was in bloom for the video. That would be nice. This variety has a white flower with pink tips on it, which is perfect because I couldn't decide between a white or a pink lotus. Same thing with the water lily, but this water lily is new and it wasn't shipped with very many roots on it, so it might be a minute until it blooms. It's being fertilized and everything, but I mean it's put up one, two, three, four new pads in the last couple weeks, so that's good. It's adjusting, but the flowers would be nice. It's a tropical. The southern charm has a uh, 
purplish flower on it. I can't find any pictures that do it justice. So I'll just make sure to keep things updated on Instagram and stuff in the future when it does bloom. Or maybe it'll be in bloom for the next garden tour in September. That would be ideal. Or if not, I'll insert footage. That'll work too. That's it. That's what I was working on off and on throughout the week. Just like in little bits. That's why the video is so long because I can only work in small pieces. Other things going on, you know. But there it is. And so from this point on, it's just going to be vlog. I'm going to cut to the vlog footage from the week and if you want to hang out and watch the vlog, enjoy. If not, you know, leave a thumbs up and I hope everything's going great for you. Have a great day, great life. All good things. I almost got a shot of a hummingbird feeding out of these heliconias. They love these heliconias. Maybe I'll get one later. I'll set up the tripod, see if I can get a shot. All right, cutting into the vlog now. Time to fix this mess up. That milk crate's there for a reason. Hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? See, I need to pot those up and just make this look nice. It's it's cluttery because I've been like moving things around, repotting orchids, and it's you know the, you know how things go here. Also, been doing a lot of pruning over here, mostly in the bananas because I like to kind of get in there and open them up. I can see there's some more I need to get back there and get. It was late. I have been. Uh, energetic at nighttime during the summer that's just kind of how it goes and it's already evening here so i shouldn't even be starting this vlog right now but it just is what it is i had a burst of energy i'm like i, I want to i want to do this now i have all these milk crates here and i was thinking these would come in useful now they're not the most sturdy milk crates that one is the rest of them not so much but i think it's fine for what i'm thinking of doing you see i like having milk crates around because it makes it easier to sort of stage things and set things up in the garden and give some space between things. Hi, how are you doing? Look how pretty the pineapple lily's looking. This is a Euchemus bicolor. Foliage is red, it's kind of hidden by the dune grass right now, but look at just how cute those flowers are. Yeah, welcome to uh, my life, no focus. That's not true, I'm actually a pretty focused person. But it's a little different when you're like narrating what you're doing because sometimes you just kind of got to let your brain go with the flow. So I'm going to do some things here, make it look nice. Be right back. I mean, I'll probably resume tomorrow when the lighting is better, but this way y'all at least know what's going on. And it's not just like, boom, I did something and nobody cares because you didn't even know that it needed to be done, right? Oh no, I'm out of Tide Pods. What am I going to eat for breakfast? This laundry will have to wait. Good morning. What did you do? Where's your enthusiasm? That means you, you you did something. Toby, what did you do? What did you do, Toby? Oh, you have such a guilty conscience. I... Okay, I'm gonna feed you. I'm gonna feed you, and I'm just gonna trust you. She looked like she was about to have one of those moments that cats have where out of nowhere they just kind of like have a burst of energy and fly up in the air and run away. You don't want your breakfast? No? Put all your food out for you. You got a napkin. You got a nice bowl of fresh cat meat food. Nothing. Bucket. We can go on. Eat your food, butt. Eat your food, honey bunny. Okay. Oh, good morning to you too, Charlie. People have asked why the other kitty's never on and it's... He's always asleep. He's an old man. Don't know how old he is. He just kind of showed up here. And uh, <laughs> apparently whoever had him didn't want him back. There were signs up all over the place and checked the micro... Like, no, nobody wanted him back. But yeah, he would show up every night. This is many summers ago. And just, like, hang out with me in the backyard. And eventually the weather was getting bad. And I was like, okay, you can come into the garage. Went on to the house. Because, like, I don't know what you got. And then eventually I was like, okay, you can come in the house. But um, I was also well before I had pumpkin. I wouldn't do that now. Sorry, Charlie, but very protective. And then old man. Thinking probably 14, maybe 15 years old. Oh, look who got their appetite back. Oh. And if anyone was confused, anyone who's new here, or maybe just like hasn't caught it when I've talked about it before, this one will only eat off of a napkin. Don't know why. That's just the way she is. <laughs> I'm sure eventually if I were to take the napkin away, she'd go eat out of the bowl. I mean, it has something to do with the flat face. I mean, her face isn't that flat for a Himalayan, actually. So, I don't know. It's just not her jam. She prefers a napkin. 
You talking about you, baby butt? I'm talking about you, baby butt. Oh. Oh. So here's what happened. I ended up getting this, like, mostly staged, sort of like a rough draft last night. And then I remembered that I originally wanted to put a fountain back here. Now, I really like having the Singapore twist here with the Vinca over the front, although I think a Creeping Jenny wouldn't make more sense. That's a Vinca that I bought as a hanging basket and divided it up. That's why it looks like it's been torn apart, because it has. So if this were to stay here, I'd probably swap that out with a Creeping Jenny. But I don't think it's going to, because I want to have a fountain here. Now, I originally wanted to have a fountain inside of this, but with what I'm planning on doing... Hopefully you will have seen it by now, because I think that's the way I want to edit this video. I don't, I don't know. It's going to be a little bit confusing. But water lilies don't like a ton of movement around their pads. Like if you put them in your pond, you want to put them kind of far away from waterfalls and water features and what like whatnot. So uh, having the fountain in there be a little bit more complicated. Now it's going to be a very, very, very low flow fountain. But even like just like a little bit of ripple on the top. I mean, I'm trying to think here. Like, what is how? That would maybe be okay. Maybe. But I think there'd be more than that. So I want the fountain to go behind it. And then I can have a light in here that shines up on it at nighttime. So, uh, in a nutshell, I was like, this is beautiful. What I had done last night, it, the footage was just too grainy, so you're not going to see it. And then I was like, no, I need to change it all. I'm changing everything. So gotta go to Lowe's. I need to get a small little pump and then I also need things that have nothing to do with this. Like I'm gonna get a few bags of mulch for the berm where I put those laurels. I'm gonna try and get a few more laurels this week and then um, like potting soil and whatnot, you know, those sorts of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I need to pull these guys out and actually get them planted because they shouldn't be fully submerged, like at all. That's not what they like. I just keep <laughs> kind of trying to make them hang out right here until I'm ready to plant them and then they drift away. But yeah, they don't like to be submerged like that. And this is the, I mean, probably will have already talked about this. But this is that Siam Sunset uh, water lily. So, I keep calling it Siam Sunset. This one's the Southern Charm. And it's doing okay. It's lost a few pads that's been moved a little bit. It's been floating up and I probably will have already talked about that. So that's not necessary. I'm going to go to, let's go to Lowe's. did want to mention there are lots of other options. Like there are really just any container. It doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Works. There's plastic barrels, there's wooden barrels. Then they have these liners you can put inside the wooden barrels. Just like that. Just slides right in, makes it real simple. Oh, and here's those wooden barrels I was talking about. Managed to get a cart and cinder blocks, so things are going much better this time. I was thinking about getting a new one of these masonry tubs. I don't need one quite this big though, but Colby needs a new toilet. You need me to elaborate? Tortoises, uh, especially the desert tortoises, you give them a little bit of a soak in water, and that's when they typically go to the bathroom. So that's that's what that's about. It's gross, I know, but better in there than in the house. And then, you know, you dump the thing and clean it out and refill it and give them fresh water and all that fun stuff. I think I got way too many bricks here, but I'd rather have extras. Look at this arborvitae. It's called Fire Chief. That is some really interesting foliage. And here's a glimpse at the tag. Feel free to pause. Two feet tall in 10 years. Hmm. Wait, to four feet tall and white at maturity. Wait. Which is two feet tall and white in 10 years to four. Okay, two to four feet. Why did they put that down so weird? I guess I was probably just reading it weird. Sorry, it's hard to cart and talk at the same time. <laughs> Good thing I just got my suspension fixed. Hope the new shocks can handle this. Oh my god, pink Veronica. Looking good, I like this. What pretty flowers. I bet they're even prettier when they're not bloomed out. This one's kind of reaching that point. Cute. Okay, I'm home, obviously. What I've done here is I have this large basin pot back here and this has had holes in it that I epoxied over so it holds water tight. I used to have water lilies in this years ago and um, I saw the tag on it so I can remember who made it and it's faded so it's kind of useless. So I've got this filled with water. I've been working on getting it level because over here I have my favorite flower pot. It's my favorite pot I have ever had and I think this would look stunning 
with water trickling over the sides. So I've got some tubing here, a fitting on it that goes onto the pump, and if you're ever wondering why my petunias always look like crap, there's your reason. Tucker likes to rub on the petunias. He's an old man, so he's getting away with it. He didn't used to, but you know how it is with your pets when they get older. I don't, you know, don't want to get too dark, but he may not be here next summer. So I'm just like, you can, you can kind of just do what you want. Have a good time. Live your best life. Anyway, so I have this set up like so. Tubing runs in there. Just, you know, I mean, like that. See? Tubing. I don't need to explain that any further. You get it. And I'm going to need to put some type of foundation, something in the bottom to separate the bottom of this pot from the bottom of the other pot, because otherwise this tube's just going to get squished. And I should probably, this is going to be a lot of pressure to make the water move all the way up there, so I should probably seal this up more than likely. I may just like pack it full of plastic. That might do the trick. I don't want to do anything too permanent because uh, I'm going to be taking it apart and whatnot in the fall time and normally if this were a larger pot I would drill a slightly larger hole put a metal pipe in there about a half inch epoxy around that and then the hose could snap onto that from the bottom and then it would be super super watertight and uh, then I wouldn't have worried have to worry about backflow so to get a little foundation that the tubing can sit in but the pot will stay above it needs to be so short and shallow that I'm thinking I'll probably just put some gravel in there like I don't know, probably an inch and a half of gravel on the bottom. What's going on here? You gonna say hi to Tuck? Say hi to Tucker, Colby? Colby, people have asked, Colby has pretty good depth perception. Never had to worry about Colby going in the pool. Usually just walks up to the side and is like, okay, can't go in there. I'm gonna leave now. So I've never had to worry about that. I think I might need to put a dish out for Colby though. Is probably thirsty, I bet that's why he's doing that. He has a dish, but it's probably all dried up. All right, it's not centered, it's not done yet. Also, good idea, buy bricks when you're at the store. I didn't do that, so I had to use a gravel to set this in there. So like I said, only need to be up a little bit. The real test here is going to be seeing if that little fountain pump has enough pressure in it to fill this up, and then I'll adjust the flow, get it centered, make it right. It's, it's gonna look nice. As long as things go to plan. We will see. And the reason I'm not centering it or anything yet is because I, I need to get my hand down there to adjust the pump. That's kind of a tight squeeze. That's another reason the flow has to be very low because the water needs to stay contained in this basin so there can't be like splatter happening. It'd be ideal if this pot on the bottom was a little bit larger but the colors match so well I was like I'm just gonna let it be like this as it is and then I can make the adjustments as necessary. But yeah, all I did, you saw me put the hose through there, that piece of tubing through the bottom hole. Then I went ahead and screwed that onto the pump, plugged the pump in. I mean, I put this whole thing down in there, got the water in there and whatnot, but that's it. Very, very simple, very easy, and it's not done though. I'm going to do more with it, and I have to balance it and level it and everything, which I did have it leveled, but you know, it's going to, it's a lot of weight, so things are going to shift a little bit. I'm about to see how this flows here in just a second. Yeah, okay, so not level, but I was sort of expecting that. So for now, I just want to go ahead and get that basin filled up the rest of the way, and I can mess with that some more. That is one thing I like about having gravel in the bottom instead of bricks, is I can adjust the gravel around to level it out, whereas with bricks, it just kind of is what it is. I'd have to take the whole thing apart and go down to the bottom. Yeah, I love it. But it's just a rough draft. I'm going to make some changes. I've got some center blocks so I can set this up more safely and I want to use this base for something else even though I think that those do go well together doesn't really matter when it's hidden behind everything so and I would like for this to be raised up higher out of that pot so do that see and here's why I like doing things like this in the vlog because we get to go through the process together process of elimination troubleshooting just makes things more thorough so if someone else decides to do something like this they can kind of see ins and outs and this is really a very 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 simple project but there can be little things that pop up and then there's always a lot of comments with a lot of nuanced questions which i'm totally happy to help with but um 
sometimes doing things in a more elaborate way and having fun with the vlog. It just makes things a little bit easier. So I've mocked this up outside of the area I was just working in because this is much easier to see. I'm going to have the cinders underneath it. I do have to have that space in between though because they're going to be sitting in a drainage path. So there needs to be something in there so that water can flow through and my drip lines are in there that run down all the way to the other side of the patio. So I'm going to have to be able to run those drip lines in there also so that they're not being crushed by the weight of those bricks. And next I want this uh, raised up. I want it up higher. Problem here though is that if I have this pot centered on top of that cinder then it's going to completely pinch that hose down and I will not get flow up here. And I can't get two cinder blocks in here. I should have measured. Didn't do that. That was, that was my bad. Whoops. So maybe try a different brick if you're using one of these containers like this. I um, don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I can make this work. Cinder blocks aren't that hard to split. Let me see. Let me grab one. Oh, it would appear none of the cinder blocks I bought are pre-scored. Okay, so these might be a little bit more difficult to split, but I'm going to give it a try. Let me go see if I can find my chisel. Look at that. That is a perfect height. I've got my cinders under there with the space in between and my drip line that goes to everything down there. Running through the middle, I chiseled a little chunk out of the side of the cinder block so I can put my pump in here. Uh, <laughs> I need to get a new chisel because typically cinders pretty easy to break apart. You just kind of score them across here on the sides and give them a whack with the hammer and it, it's split in half. But nope, 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 not these ones. I don't know if maybe I need to take this chisel to the grinder because it's gotten pretty round on here so maybe that was part of the problem. Uh, could just be the type of cinder. I don't know. Not normally a problem. Usually a very simple thing to do. And I mean, it probably still would be, but honestly, I was like, well, I broke a chunk out of the one, so might as well just use that one. <laughs> oh, look how pretty. That'll get there. And here's where things get kind of iffy. I know it doesn't really matter considering everything else that's a mess right now, but that's bugging me. I want the pot up higher. So I'm redoing this entire thing. I want to be able to see the shape of that blue pot, how it's, you know, small and then big and... That'll look a lot better. The problem is, if there's not a tight seal on here, then having the base of the pot up and out of the water, water's gonna be down here. See the cinder blocks stick up a little bit higher. Uh, and I'm gonna have to really just test it out and see if this pump can handle that kind of pressure, because it's a lot more pressure when part of the pot, when the bottom of the pot's not submerged. I don't care about seeing this. I'm gonna put some water hyacinth in here so that won't even be visible. There's not even much water in there yet, and I'm already testing this out looking to see if basically the pump has to put water in here faster than it'll leak back out otherwise i have to do something to seal up that hole which i'd rather not do because that's complicated and it takes longer and i want to just throw this together and have it be nice it's not complicated plugging up the hole it just would take long so either have to go find a seal or use a silicone or like flex it it's things that typically have to dry uh there have been times i've just like stuffed old plastic bags around the hoses and things like this and that worked fine so i'm Seems to be okay. Just gonna give it some time. One of the other reasons I want it to be up higher like this is because I'm gonna put a light in here. And at nighttime, I want the reflection of this to be on the still water in front of it. And uh, well, that's not gonna happen if this is down a lot lower. You know what I'm saying? Might take a while for the hyacinths to fill in there. And I'm also, this, another thing, not done troubleshooting yet because I'm gonna have to watch how the velocity is, how the flow is coming down the sides if there's too much splatter gonna have to make adjustments because you have to constantly put water in it, and that's a waste so but it's an adjustable pump make sure the pump you get has a dial on it those do tend to wear out a little bit faster if you turn them down a little bit it's a little rough on the motors but but it was a really cheap pump anyways so I mean it's already given me a few problems I've had to flick it a few times to get it going and uh seems okay like this isn't filling very quickly at all and I'm not noticing like a lot of water coming back out the bottom there so should be okay it just needs to be a very nice slow movement that is absolutely perfect exactly what I wanted see the water is just very very gently coming over the top just enough so when you run your hands through here there's some water moving through there's like hardly any splatter at all this is what I was going for I did have to like just very, very gently, I put a little piece of broken uh, cement down here from the cinder blocks. It's not focused. 
There we go. Not that that helps very much, but I just had to give it a little bit of a tilt, like eighth of an inch. There were a couple angled pieces, so I was able to slide them under there and adjust them. Because the flow on this was like so slow that when this was level, you really like almost couldn't even tell that there was anything happening here. And I want to be able to tell that there's water coming across the top. It just doesn't need to be like loud. You know, it's not a waterfall. It just needs to have some movement in between the cracks. Okay, so the bones are in place, but I need to like change everything about it. There's too much going on. I don't want pots all over the patio, especially when they don't match. I don't like it, but it's getting dark. Been a long day. Two trips to Lowe's and whatnot. I also like have like tons of mulch and gravel and I've been doing other things too. So I'm going to pick up in the morning. But you see that reflection? That looks nice, doesn't it? Now, this could pose a problem because, well, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I was going to put the spotlight in this pot to shine up on there, but if the spotlight is in this pot, then you're not going to see the reflection, which means I have to put it in this pot, which is fine, but I want the highest sense in there because that's going to really fill out and hide the brick. Without the water hyacinth, then there's just, there's just a brick there. I don't want to look at a brick. So I might like tuck some things into those corners in there. Creeping Jenny, something, even the hyacinth, just let so that it'll grow over the sides of those bricks, you know? It'll spill over the front. I don't know. We'll worry about that in the morning. Good morning, Toby. Uh, you better sit down. You're supposed to sit. You're supposed to sit. Okay, you're free. You're free. Good boy. Hey, good morning, Tuck. Oh, bye. <laughs> oh, boy. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> that was cute. Do you think so, Pumpkin? Okay, so as I was saying last night, what's bothering me is I don't want it to just look like there's pots and things just cluttered all over the place, which will be improved as I like get things cleaned up from even doing this project. But there's just... It just doesn't look right. There's no balance. Not that it needs a ton of balance because I kind of like things to look naturalized. I don't know. It's like kind of a weird thing to describe when you're coming to things in pots because there's nothing natural about pots. But it's sort of like, um, you ever looked at pictures on Instagram from like um, Bali and parts of like Indonesia and where there's like really bright, vibrant doorways, but just surrounded by very lush growth? Kind of like that. You get what I'm saying? So I gotta change everything. I'm just kidding. I'm not changing everything. I didn't need to flash my hand in front of the camera like that either. But I want the Singapore twist to be a statement in my garden. I want it to stand out. I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna go put it like over by my hot tub, I think. And then uh, to balance things out, I'm probably gonna move this water lily into this little pot, which I'm soaking my stromanthes in right now because they got kind of dry, which is weird because we got a lot of rain last night, but they're still sort of dry. So they're getting a soak to fully rehydrate. This pot, very shallow for a water lily. It's not something I would do if it were like April or May. It's only a couple months of growing left. So I might go ahead and just give that a shot. That or I'll move this water lily over into the actual pond pond. See, it's above ground, but I might do that. Because originally I wanted to do a lotus in this pot. And I would still like to do that. So it's going to remain empty probably for right now. If that doesn't work. And, I, you know, as I'm looking at it, I don't think it is going to work. Because this water lily is already stretched out to the appropriate depth for that pot. But I just, I don't like this tall pot right here. I wouldn't mind it in the background. Like with this, uh, Cordelin fruticosa back here. But not right there. It's not working. Just explaining my logic, that's all. I need to prune this leaf off the bird of paradise. And you may notice how there's this hyacinth coming over the side. I don't remember if I talked about this yesterday or not. It's the one problem with like doing a long vlog where you're vlogging a little bit every day is sometimes it's hard to keep up with what you talked about already. But the hyacinths will, as long as that water's flowing over there, they form little runners. They have little connectors basically from plant to plant offshoots. And that will run down the side just like a trailer would. Just like if you were to have like a creeping jenny or a petunia coming out the side of a pot. Whereas these are a little bit different because each individual plant will put out roots, but it will climb over the front. It's not even climbing. It'll just drape down there. And that's going to look really neat, but it's going to take some time. just wanted to clarify that so people don't think I just like left it there. That's intentional. I want it to spread and flow over the front. Yeah, okay. Like in the direction this is going. That orc is just chilling there for a minute so I can take pictures of it. It's not staying there. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm liking this. 
One problem though, I've established symmetry, which like, I know that doesn't sound like a problem. These palms aren't a perfect match for each other. This one's a little bit crooked. Okay, apparently that's just the way it's shaped. Um, the two triple trunk Adenidias on each side, they're not perfectly symmetrical. You know, this one has more trunk than that one. It's hard to get two totally symmetrical ones, especially when you're getting them on clearance. So, but with the two Heliconias there and the, so like I was saying with the symmetry, good thing and bad thing. Only reason it's a bad thing, so I don't have two of everything I need to go ahead and finish this area off. And I have to be really careful about what I do over here because nothing can be up against the sides here. So like you can see, I folded back this piece of leaf here on this Heliconia because that was hitting this. And if it's up like that, then the water runs down that leaf, drains out of the whole thing. Can't have that. So I have like two spots back here where I was thinking about maybe putting something else. Over here, this whole area, have the Crotons and the Begonias. I have two more pink Dragon's Wing Begonias, and I have two more Crotons. So that would kind of tie this area in over to that area, which I think would be nice. So I'm going to give it a try, but both of those plants are kind of bushy plants. So if they're back on each side there, they might, I might have trouble keeping them from touching the sides of the fountain and then water running all over the place. Uh, I'm going to play around with it. Okay, I was wrong. I have a red dragon's wing and a pink dragon's wing. That's not going to work for me. When I got this one, it was inside at the grocery store and the flowers were white. And I brought it home, it got sun and they turned red. I was hoping it would turn pink. So that's, nope, that's not going to work. I mean, it's still pretty, but it doesn't work. I like the crotons though. They need some adjusting, but I do like them. I don't want them encroaching too much on the heliconia, so I want a little bit more space in there. Uh-huh, yep, I'm liking it. Only problem though, I have these oh, Luca Kajas down here. These were on clearance. They were like three bucks a piece. So I was like, I'll get them. They shouldn't be sitting in here. They just, they needed a good soak. Things, the air's kind of dry. And even with the rain last night, didn't have much that snail down there. They're so bad this year. Anyways, what I was getting at is just by having those right there and seeing the little pop of foliage in that pot, I was like, you know what? I gotta go get the Lotus. I can't have something that I want to be somewhat like, I'm going to say Balinese inspired, because I'm not like following any design principles other than I just like want it to look pretty in my eyes. But it, you got to have a lotus, right? So let's run out, go get a lotus and pick one out. It's going to have to be a small lotus because this is not a very big pot. So, but there are different varieties. Hopefully the place I'm going has those. And there's a lot more I want to do in here, but it doesn't matter. You guys have seen the real veal by now, right? I don't know why I said that weird reveal. That was at the beginning of the video. So this is just kind of, y'all get to hang out with me in the process. And I've changed this up over and over and over again. Just been playing with things. You know, I have a lot of plants, so it makes it kind of fun to do this. And I haven't actually planted things in place yet because I want to make sure I like how it looks. And so that might be a while. And you can see I kind of walked away from the symmetry thing a little bit just because it's like, I have to have a fern over here. So that's why the macho fern's there because I just had to. And I have some other things I want to mix in here. Like I have a little bamboo stand and like a pretty table that's, I mean, it's actually, it's a uh, Mexican design, but it's colorful, so I'm going to make it work. And I have like a purple lantern somewhere to, it doesn't matter, y'all have seen this by now. Let's go buy a lotus plant. Last time I was right here in this drive through my car turned off and I had to push it through and it was pouring down rain. It's kind of triggering. It was a horrible experience. Because there was a line of people behind me, and I think anybody would have been very upset by that happening. But I just, I have this thing where I never want to be trouble. I don't want to ever be an inconvenience. It's just, it's a thing in my personality. And, like, the idea of holding up a line, even if it was only for, like, 45 seconds, was just absolutely mortifying. But anyways, on a funnier note, I thought I had my music off when I got up to the drive through It turned out it was just, like, transitioning from song to song. So right when she said, hey, welcome to Starbucks, how can I help you? And you just, <laughs> it just starts going, mama, mama. I can't even say it probably on YouTube. It's a song called Areota. Um, it's um, not the most appropriate song. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe the Spanish equivalent to like the thong song. Which, by the way, 90s classic. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> That's nobody ever. So I hopefully they don't speak Spanish because the first four words. Very inappropriate. Inappropriate enough, I can't go into it here. But I just love this song. I know it's nasty. 
but it's on my playlist and it comes on and I'm like, yeah. And it's the, like, you know, my dog didn't even bark up that tree, but I still enjoy the song. Yes, I'm back at Starbucks. I'm getting a tea. There's one on the way. I was like, I need an iced tea. I don't need, I want an iced tea. I wish, and maybe you can do this. Can you bring your own thermos to Starbucks? Because the only issue I have with going to get like drinks and food all the time is the, it's like a little bit wasteful of the cups. I do try and hold on to them though. Um, like I rinse them out and keep them in my cabinet and I'll use them, put them in my Yeti so that I don't have to wash my Yeti. It's like a liner, not my Yeti, just my, you know, the thermos. Is this, this isn't very entertaining at all. I'll, we'll pick back up when I get to the plant nursery. Pond nursery. Pond, pond, bye. Hey, I should get one of these. Just kidding. No way could I pull that off. Do not have a pond big enough for those. Pretty cool though. Don't see those for sale very often. It's the Victoria water lilies. Eh, yeah, pretty stuff here. I think I've uh, vlogged here before. I'm gonna see if I can't find a little lotus and get back to work. So well, I just got home and the light came in the mail, but there's a slight problem. Always is, right? What the heck am I supposed to do with that? It didn't, it can't, I, I know how to wire some stuff, but I'm not doing it when it's underwater. Look how short the, I'll be sending that back. That sucks. I was really hoping to show this thing set up and lit and everything. I'll check Amazon, see if I can't get something rushed over here. You know, Amazon, it's not what it used to be. I'm gonna, I'll save that for later, but I did, did, did. Hey, what you doing? I missed you. Yeah. You got a big eye buggy. You got some big eye bugs, Pumpkin. Where you going? Okay, I gotta get to work. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to measure. Oh, I hope this fits. That would, that would suck. Oh no. Perfect. That is a perfect fit. This variety, not that it matters when it's just foliage, but it's called Decorated Lantern. It does have one flower bud on it. You know, a lot of the lotuses are blooming now or like finishing up their bloom. So I wanted to get one that at least had one little flower on it so everybody would be able to see it. The variety has like a white flower with pink tips, which is pretty cool because I couldn't decide between white or pink. So kind of best of both worlds here. And uh, yeah, like I said, Perfect. It's a small to medium sized lotus, so it's not going to get huge. I think it's like a two to four footer is what they said. It'll need to be bumped up into a different pot eventually, but for now this is perfect. They just fertilized it a few days ago, so I don't need to fertilize it again until like the 15th, twice a month. So I'll do that. And then once more, probably September 1st, and that'll be it for the rest of the year. And this is almost done. Okay, there's one last thing I want to do with this area that, like, I just keep thinking about it. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't at least try. I think it would look absolutely wonderful to have a Song of India tucked into each one of these corners, as long as it doesn't come too far forward and block the fountain. That probably wouldn't look good. Problem is, I, like, I'm not going out and buying plants for this other than the lotus, you know? Everything that's here, I had planned on doing something like this. Over here, I've actually wanted to do this for years, and I'm happy to finally getting to it. I just, I really, I have two of them. See, I have this one that I potted up in a video right here, and I have the one that's in the foot planter. I have no issue with pulling the one out of the foot planter because it's, a, it's a foot. I can throw something else in there, like a caladium. No one's gonna look at this and be like, oh, what a work of art, because it's a foot, you know. So I have no problem with taking this one out, but I really like that other one that's in that blue pot with the coral. I don't know, I gotta think about this. Because it's also a little bit risky. Like, these might be a little bit too big there, and I may end up not liking it. Hmm. Well, won't we'll know if we don't try, right? Come over here, grab a cinder block, position that down right in this corner. So that pot has some place to sit. Well, that's not gonna work. Say I tried to intentionally kind of leave a corner here that that would fit into, but it might not be. No, nah, I think that's okay. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. I think one on each side might be a bit much, but just having one right there doesn't look... Hmm. Okay, yeah, I like it. I went ahead and just decided to not unpot that one, because I want it in that pot for when I bring it in the house in the wintertime. That one, I think you just saw, I put in a plastic nursery pot. 
So they're not perfectly even, but they don't need to be. Nothing in nature is perfectly symmetrical, but I like them. I'm gonna twerk the, not twerk, <laughs> twerk the plant. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit so that the they're positioned a little bit more evenly, but that's, that's good. Maybe could use some bromeliads, but like, I think this is good. This is a spot I can keep adding and subtracting from, so this is good. And I think that the heliconias kind of make up for the bromeliads. I know it's not the same, but the flowers on them, for some reason, are, they had that same tropical appeal to me as the bromeliads. Same thing with the curcumas that I put in the back here. You can see these curcumas, those gingers. They had a nice pop of color. They pull your eye through, which is why I like having things like that kind of tucked away, because it's not just like you're looking right here. When you have small details hidden in the back, it makes you look through and notice a lot of things. So, perfect. Okay, we got the area cleaned up. There's my little bamboo stand over there. I just put a rock on it for now. I want, I'm going to do a little planter to put on there. Pass away for another time. Threw a seashell down there. Just, you know, some little details. I can't find my purple lantern. So, that's not going to make it over here. But I'll be adding to this over time. So, this is good for now. It is raining, just starting to rain, thunderstorms are moving in, and I still have a lot to do, so I'm debating whether or not to keep working or just to, like, give up. Here's what happened. Pine tree is gone. Amazing, right? Finally. I say finally. It's only been a couple weeks, but look at how big of a gap that left there. I can't handle that. That's too much for me. I need my privacy. I don't like that. And I don't have time to replant something there. It's not even that I don't have time. It's just that it's not really an option just yet. So uh, I might just, like, throw some plants up there. And by throw some plants up there, I mean, like, I have some elephant ears and majesty palms and whatnot. It'll help. I won't fill it in, but it's going to help. You know, I was really excited last weekend to get these laurels planted up in here. And um, I just, I really want to finish this. I, I want to finish the whole berm. So, um... Well, it's just driving me crazy. Y'all know, like, would I be able to wait to do this? Eh. So I have the others over here. I need to get these planted up. I just, it's really, it's starting to come down. I don't really want to be standing right underneath a tree with a metal shovel in my hand while there's thunder and lightning. So I guess I won't, but those are there. I'm happy I have them. They may, they may not make it into the ground in time for the garden tour, which will have been out already. That, that was probably the video right before this one. Oh, and I threw this Singapore twist up here on the wall of the hot tub, which doesn't work right now, but when it is working, that'll be nice to look at from inside there. Yeah, it's like raining, raining now, so I guess I'm just gonna have to call it quits. I'll pick back up tomorrow, but I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to get done. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, but I mean this. I've wanted to do this for years. I am so happy to have done this, and I found some different lights that from Amazon, Amazon, from Amazon, and it says they'll be here tomorrow, so I'll still be able to work that into the vlog, hopefully. Oh, got a fresh pepper harvest. The jalapenos started to crack a little bit, so I waited a little bit too long to pick some of those, picking lots of jalapenos. The jalapeno I planted this year, I'm not thrilled with it. They're really small. I mean, look at how tiny these little guys are. And there are different varieties that give you larger sizes. These, I'm not going to plant that one next year. I'm going to go with one of the ones that's like known to give nice big jalapenos that I can use for cooking a little bit more easily because this is worthless. And this one's... Oh, no, that's still firm. So, but I have gone through a lot of jalapenos. Their flavor is pretty good. There are only a couple that were ready to pick today on the Carolina Reaper, so I went ahead and threw that in there. So I just have them hanging out in here with the habaneros. Lots of good habaneros. Their flavor's been pretty good. And then Trinidad Scorpions, they've been pretty good. I have enough though. I don't need any more of these super spicy peppers. Same thing with the Carolina Reaper. I just wanted a few and nobody sells them around here. So I planted one, but I'm gonna go ahead and I think pull those out and swap them out with Poblanos because there's still like 60, 70 days left in the growing season and that's what they need to mature. And I have some plants that are already started. I don't think I'm gonna pinch them back for nice bushy growth. They're a little bit leggy, but I'm just gonna leave them be because I don't think they have quite the time for a recovery. So it's like, even if I just get a few peppers off the poblanos, I'll be happy with that. I'll eat a lot more poblanos than habaneros and Carolina reapers and the scorpion peppers. And the jalapenos, they've been nice. But isn't it fun, colorful, and pretty? 
Oh, somehow missed that one. That one's a little bit, that one's a little bit overdone. Don't need that one. But yeah, everything else looked pretty good. Haven't really had any issues with bugs because what insect is going to chew on these, right? Which is one of the other reasons I like growing them. They're really simple. Nothing bothers them. My dogs don't eat them. When I grow tomatoes, I have some tomatoes. I planted them up high this year, but um, my dogs will sometimes eat the tomatoes right off the plant and the like tomatoes will start popping up in the yard because they poop out the little tomato seeds. It's, it's, it's the joy of having dogs, right? Okay, Poblanos, they're in. There's two. You can see what's talking about how they're, they've stretched out a little bit and typically with peppers when they start to do that, if you give them a pinch in half, I mean even further down, they'll bush out really nicely, but just with the time of year, I'm just going to let them be. I'm going to let them do their thing. I've also noticed that the sun is changing, which I mean, it happens every year. It's how things work with seasons. But it's just there's not quite as much sun over here as there was before. Here's the pot from the Poblano right there. So um, I'm going to have to keep an eye. I may have to move them. I'm not sure. And then I need to... I kept the habanero because like, I'll use the habaneros more than the others for sure. And then there's another Poblano down here so yeah that's the update there i never potted the jalapeno i didn't see a reason to i was like it's already in a pot it's grown really well i'm just gonna leave it alone makes things easier for me okay and i have completely sort of redone this area i still need to scrub all these cushions and everything but i went ahead and i put a limelight hydrangea in here with the majesty palm and another one down here and they'll be fine they're fresh from the nursery that they showed up at the nursery looking like because I got them there right when they were coming off the truck. So that just is what it is. It's fine. They've already perked up a lot since I planted them in here. But I like the idea of having those right here just because the light up there, that reflection at nighttime, it'll brighten things up and pull the eye back here, which would be very nice. The only thing I've left to do is I need to retrench this entire area. This is still like partially left over from where there was like a little miniature mudslide over here that just washed everything through and this entire area needs to be regraded so i'm not gonna be doing much with it this year anyways but that's pretty much it i hope everybody's doing well oh wait no no i can't say goodbye yet it's not nighttime. the lights came in the mail i went ahead and i got them set up i still need to this whole cord everything is going to get hidden back there but i need someone to help me like pass it through and weave it and then i have a little enclosure i can put that in to protect it from the water but the lights installed so we'll pick back up when it's dark out and i'll change over to the different camera with the better ones and, and say, say goodbye and have a look at this. But I guess you'll have already seen the nighttime shot at the beginning, maybe. I don't know. I haven't figured out how I'm going to edit this yet because I would, well, you will have known by now. I don't need to go on all that. Oh, this is stunning. Then hello from my shadow. I know it probably looks kind of bright. This lens, my nighttime lens, it picks up so much light that sometimes it's hard to even tell that it's dark out, but you can tell from here that it's dark out. A little bit of trouble focusing it because it's a Sigma lens for a Canon and I'm using a Sony and the autofocus kind of sucks, so I'm not going to use it. But yeah, there it is. Isn't it pretty? See that? You see that? See the reflection right there? That's what I was talking about. If I could have pushed this back a little bit further, that would be more noticeable. Well, it wouldn't be more noticeable. The uh, fountain itself would be lit up more and that would be nice, but I would lose some of the reflection because the fountain would be further away. I had to point the light up almost directly straight up at that pot to get it to light up, but it worked out just fine. Uh, the light changes color a little bit faster than I would like it to. That's as slow as I could get it to go, so just kind of is what it is. I'll probably end up picking a color and just leaving it on there because like, look at how quickly it's washing through. A little bit too fast for my liking, but I love the colors, so I really shouldn't say that because I do enjoy it. It's like I said, it's going kind of fast. I'd like for it to be a very slow and smooth change. Because ideally, I would have it match up with the swimming pool. Let me set this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, so you see how in the pool the colors change very, very slowly. It's actually going a little bit faster than I thought I had it set on. But it's, well, that's actually more abrupt than... The, I, there's new lights in the pool. Why is it only going from blue to green? Well, this is supposed to be doing all kinds of colors, so apparently I need to go mess with the settings on that where it does a slower color wash, because that would be my preference. But I mean, you guys get the point. I went ahead and reset this a little bit so you can see the reflection a little bit better. I'm going to be doing a separate tour at nighttime, so I don't want to do too much. I don't have all my lights on out here either, because I'm not trying to give away any spoilers, but 
yeah, lighting at nighttime, very important to me. I especially love seeing all the ripples and everything up in the foliage of the palm trees. Isn't that beautiful? One of the fun things about LEDs is the precise, the precision of an LED lens. You get so much more effect with ripple, with lighting, when you're lighting up water gardens and things like that. And like I had mentioned, being able to see the reflection in the pot in front of it was really important to me too. So I'm glad that that worked out. See that? So much reflection, so much happy. And it goes all the way up into the pine trees. You can see it on the limbs and whatnot. It makes everything sort of sparkle a little bit. And I did, okay, one spoiler, I did get two of these. See, look, isn't this lens amazing? It's nighttime. Look at the sky. See the stars? Love this lens. I wish the autofocus worked, but that's okay. Yeah, so I have this fountain lit up just the same as the other one. Same lights and everything. Do you want to see the lights? I'll show you the light. Hold on. Oh, never mind. It's not going to show up on camera, and it doesn't matter because the box doesn't say anything anyways. It's just some weird random off-brand light. It's called, like, underwater happy light. I don't know. I'll link the one I got off of Amazon in the description. I just got them, though, so I can't really vouch for them. I don't know how good they are other than they've been running for, like, I don't know half an hour <laughs> they seem pretty good but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up it's been a fun week working in little increments i can't believe i have a shadow i don't have any lights on behind me that's nuts that it's that sensitive to light but hey i hope everybody's doing well having a great day great life everything's going beautifully for you and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up it makes a big difference for the channel and for the videos i appreciate it so thank you oh and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell upload multiple times a week that way you know new videos come out i wish i could like get a zoom it's a fixed lens so there's no no zooming I, you probably didn't appreciate that i'm so sorry yeah, you can kind of see how there's ripple moving into the plants to the side too oh yeah and as always social media and everything's linked down below down in the description of the video instagram is probably the best place to follow me i'm not very active on the other ones but that's where i keep things posted and updated and it's a good place to contact me if you have like questions just want to chat and say hi speaking of saying hi comment down below what's up how's everybody doing you guys got fun diy projects going on okay like i said hope y'all are doing well and as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye